Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 25th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Madrid, Spain. We got a couple of nice diaries this weekend. Actually, my favorite was probably the one from Friday by Remco, where he talked about reverse analyzing malware written in Go. Go is Google's programming language and it has become quite popular, mostly I think for network software because it has quite nice networking capabilities, but also has some fairly easy and lightweight threats, which of course is always nice if you for example, want to write a server that's able to deal with multiple connections. Remco is going through some of the initial steps in getting started with Go language. For example, uh, because the binaries are all statically linked, they tend to be quite large, so they're usually compressed and going forward, how to then decompile some of the Go code. And then we got two diaries by Didi. One actually deals with some malware that uses the Velvet Switch Hop uh, password. If you remember, this was something actually we wrote about last year that old Word documents used that password as of a default encryption password. So if you encrypt current Word documents with this password, they're automatically decrypted by Word, but still in some cases may sneak past antivirus. Virus. And the second diary by Didier gives you a quick Python script to read QR codes. This is useful for some of the recent extortion emails that are using QR codes in order to communicate the Bitcoin address. And then of course, some filters that you set up to find Bitcoin addresses, well, they may not trigger. And this weekend we had yet another edition of the Pwn to Own hacking contest and yet again pretty much all software being presented to the teams did fall. They developed exploits against Firefox, Safari, Microsoft Edge, Windows 10, VirtualBox and VMware. First time this time they also had a Tesla car available for hacking and yes it was also hacked in this case via a just-in-time compiler vulnerability in the web browser that is used for the car's entertainment system. Pwn to own is very different from your normal capture the flag that you may find at many security conferences. With Pwn to own, the systems being set up as a target are fully patched with no known vulnerabilities and the prize money being handed out is also rather substantial. In this case, over the weekend, more than $500,000 worth of prizes were handed out. And that I think doesn't even include the Tesla, which was awarded to the team that actually found this browser bug, in addition to a substantial cash prize. All vulnerabilities found at Pwn to Own are being reported to the vendors. They're not being made public until a patch is available. And Tesla, for example, already announced that they are working on a patch. And the number of Nokia 7 Plus phones delivered to customers in Norway were found to send their serial numbers and other data to a server in China. Initially, it wasn't really clear why they did it, but apparently it turns out that HMD Global, the company that's currently owning the Nokia brand, did install the wrong software on these phones that were delivered to a Norwegian telecom company. It's not clear if this happened to other countries or other companies as well. Uh, this time it looks like the only affected company is NRK, this company in Norway. HMD announced that they pushed a software update that should fix this particular problem. But just shows it's always a good idea if you have a new device to capture some packets to see what it is reporting back to manufacturers and where these servers are located that the data is being reported to. And Java Card is one of those technologies that nobody really knows much about, but everybody is using it. It's commonly used in smart cards, in particular in SIM cards that you commonly find in mobile phones. 
The idea of these Java cards is that the card itself is a little computer that runs a limited version of Java inside a virtual machine. And by doing so, any code loaded into the card for execution should be isolated sufficiently where it doesn't have access to directly read any secrets being kept inside the card. Well, researchers at Security Explorations found now 18 different vulnerabilities in Oracle's uh, reference implementation of Java Card, and they used the latest greatest version that was just released in January. All of these vulnerabilities were reported to Oracle and they can lead to corrupt the memory, which then gives malicious applets access to the full memory of the card. Patching this may of course be tricky and in many cases require you to swap cards for one with updated software. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.